Make sure you check out 10 Questions this week as I interview Sammy from Skeleton Key Comics. Great interview. We had a great time, so make sure you check that out. It'll drop Thursday, November the 4th at 7 a.m. Make sure you check down in the description below so you can find out how to get a Small Town Collectibles comic book mystery box and a discount code with Street Level Hero LA where you'll get 10% off your order and raise some money for a great cause. What is going on, everybody? It is Tuesday, and it is time for first appearances and key issues for the greatest day of the week, New Comic Book Day, November 3rd, 2021. It's going to be a big week for the indie comics, so we got a lot to get into, so let's get started. I'm Jimmy Don Kerr, and this is the Small Town Collectibles YouTube channel. Before we get into the first appearances, the key issues, the cool covers coming out this week, if you don't mind, if you haven't already, hit that subscription button, turn on that notification bell so that you get notified when I put out new content, smash that like button, and leave a comment below, and let me know what books you're looking at this week for New Comic Book Day, any books I should have added to the list, anything I missed, yeah. As I say every week, I want this to be a conversation between myself and the community about New Comic Book Day, so yeah, make sure you leave a comment down below. All right, with all that out of the way, let's jump into our first category, and that's our covers. So I only had two covers this week that really stood out to me, and the way that I kind of choose these is as I'm looking through the new books and what's coming out, if there's something that just immediately jumps out to me, I add it to this list. And the first one is the one-shot Batman Superman Authority Special Number 1. Now this is the variant cover B, and this is the one where you've got Superman basically flying by the Batwing. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, yep, sold. I gotta have that one. Just a great, great cover. Can't wait to pick that one up. And then, of course, as I say every week, I think I have a Lucio Perillo cover every week, and this week is no different. And that is Sheena, Queen of the Jungle, number one. And again, I mean, you're looking at the cover on the screen now. Wow, is all I can say. Absolutely gorgeous cover. And much like Gun Honey last week, I really like the cat. I do. I like the cat in the picture. So yeah, Sheena, Queen of the Jungle, number one. The Perillo cover is absolutely gorgeous. I love it. All right, that wraps up the covers this week. Let's jump into our next category, and that is the second prints. So of course, as always in this category, we're going to highlight any cool books coming out this week that have second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth prints, whatever they are. And the first one is the Death of Doctor Strange, number one. This is the cover H Second printing from Lee Garbett. Very, very cool looking cover. Then we've got Moon Knight, uh, number three, the cover D second print from Steve McNiven. Now there's also a Walmart variant for this cover and the Walmart variant has a red background. So if you like to pick up those Walmart packs, be on the lookout for that Moon Knight second print cover. Then we have X-Men Trial of Magneto number two, cover F, second printing from Valerio Shiti. Again, another great series. I've really enjoyed reading that one. Very cool second print out this week for number two. And wrapping up the second prints this week is Hard Case Crime, Gun Honey number one, cover J, the third printing. And this one is the Adam Hughes Metallic Ink variant cover. Yeah, Gun Honey is phenomenal. If you're not reading that, and then the last issue, flip the page, and I was like, holy crap, what a, what a book is all I can say. Can't wait till the next one comes out and you get this third printing of number one out this week. All right, that takes care of all the second prints this week. Let's jump into our key issues. As I mentioned at the onset, there aren't a ton of books from the big two this week uh, that I would consider key issues. I do have a couple from DC, and the first one is Dark Knights of Steel, number one. This is written by Tom Taylor, and the art is by Yasmin Putri. Now, this is a 12-issue Elseworlds format story with characters from the DC universe in a medieval setting, and you get the introduction of the Kingdom of Storms. Now, this I'm looking forward to this. There's a lot of really cool covers on this one, so make sure you're on the lookout for those and pick the one that you want. 
um, some really nice incentive variants um, or uh, like store variant covers uh, that I've seen for this book. So yeah, make sure you're on the lookout for this one. I think this will be a fun read and then you can't beat Tom Taylor and uh, Yasmin Putri. So two of my favorites right there. Can't wait to jump into Dark Knights of Steel number one. And then wrapping up the DC section is Human Target number one. And this one is written by Tom King and Greg Smallwood. This is a 12 issue detective noir series featuring Christopher Chance, who debuted in Action Comics number 419 in 1972. So I am not the biggest Tom King fan, but I do like a good detective story. So I'll probably check this one out, give it a read and see how it goes from there. All right, now we jump over to Marvel, and the first book for Marvel this week is Strange Academy, Death of Doctor Strange number one. And this, of course, is a tie-in to the Death of Doctor Strange series that's ongoing right now. And then we've got X-Men Legends number eight, and I highlighted this as a key book because you get Wolverine versus Omega Red in this book. So if you're a big X-Men fan and you're reading this X-Men Legends number eight or X-Men Legends book, I think number eight could be a really, really cool read when you get Wolverine Omega Red going at it. Okay, that wraps up the books from the big two from DC and Marvel. Like I said, not a ton out from those guys this week that I will consider key issues, but we do have a ton of stuff from the indie category. So let's jump into that. First up, from Ablaze, we have Laura and Other Stories number one. Before his work on Batman and the hit Joker series, before he created Carmen, there was the heartfelt story of Laura the book that led Guillaume March to the mainstream comics world. Suffering from the ever painful experience of unrequited love, 20 year old Laura takes a look at her life. Is the fact that the boy she has feelings for is in love with someone else mean there's something wrong with her? Or is that just how young love goes? And what will happen when she tries to get past the hurt and move on with her life? Laura is an exploration into the mind of a young woman who has, who has experiencing something most people have, but in an honest and beautiful way that only Gilliam March can bring to us. So yeah, if you're into that type of title uh, from Ablaze, got that one out for you this week, and that's Laura and Other Stories number one. Then we jump over to Aftershock, and we got a couple of what I think pretty cool titles uh, from them this week. And the first one is After Dark number one, Tales from the Crypt meets the Twilight Zone. Four tales of horror, lost souls, and things that go bump in the night. This was in a prestige format, and it's called a one-shock instead of a one-shot, right? You get it? One-shock. Featuring top creative talent just in time for the most horrific month of the calendar year. After Dark is a collection of tales you'll want to read with the lights on. A disparate tale from a possible future, a chance encounter with a mythical black-eyed kid, a children's fable gone awry, and gut-wrenching last meal at the local diner. That one sounds fun. I really dig the cover on that one too. So After Dark number one is a must pick up for me this week. Also from Aftershock, we have Heathens number one. When evil men and women escape from the depths of the internal abyss, the pirate queen, Lady She, is sent to retrieve them. But when one of history's most notorious killers breaks free, even she needs help. Enter the Heathens. She, Lucky Luciano, Bumpy Johnson, Sophia the Golden Hand, and Billy the Kid. From hell, they came to met out a justice as dark as their own tormented souls. So yeah, Heathers number one also sounds good to me this week. I I'm definitely going to give that one a read, probably digitally, but I'm definitely going to check that one out. Then we jump over to Ahoy Comics, and we've got My Bad number one. This is a sharp superhero spoof from a stellar team that includes co-creators of Irredeemable and Second Coming. In Gravel City, the supervillain Emperor King has devised not only a sadistic death trap for his arch enemy, the Accelerator, but also means to penetrate the top secrets of his other arch enemy, the Chandelier. Important new comic book universe begins here, we say sarcastically. So this is just a superhero spoof I think this might be fun to read. And again, probably a book that I'll check it out online, but one that I'm going to check out nonetheless. And then from Archie Comics, we have Chilling Adventures in Sorcery number one. Madam Satan is our tour guide into this horrific world, exploring the underbelly of Riverdale and its surrounding areas. Madam Satan is trying to escape hell. She goes through the circles of hell in reverse. And along the way, she meets lost, tortured souls who tell their stories like that of Archie Andrews, 
who accepted a seemingly normal job as the nighttime security shift at Riverdale's local pizzeria and children's mascot entertainment venue, only to learn that the venue harbors a deep, dark, robotic, monstrous secret. And then there's Jughead Jones, a teen who never met a food he didn't like until now. What is that eerie noise coming from the kitchen? All that plus more bonus frightful content to delight all Archie horror fans. So if you're an Archie comics reader, Chilling Adventures and Sorcery Number 1 is out for you this week. Then we jump over to ARH Studios and Undying Queen Number 1. It's Mesopotamia, 3000 BCE. It is the dawn of mankind and the age of Arcala, the Undying Queen of Ur. In this distant past, the lands of summer are ruled by Arcala, cursed by the demon god Asag with the immortality and feeding on human blood. She rules the world with an iron grip at the price of her soul and humanity. This is her story. Then we go over to AWA Upshot, and this is a book I'm really looking forward to this week, and that is Knighted Number 1. Bob Ryder is a hapless bureaucrat whose bad luck streak comes to a crescendo when he accidentally kills the city's mass vigilante, the Knight. Oops. Now, Bob is forced to take on the mantle of the legendary hero before the city descends into chaos. Good thing he's got the Knight's former butler slash assistant to show him the ropes. I think that's funny, like that sounds fun, that you accidentally kill the city's mass vigilante and before it goes into chaos, you've got to become the, the vigilante. I don't know. I think that sounds fun. Can't wait to pick up Knight at number one from AWA Upshot. Then from Danger Zone, we've got Digger number one. Jack Digger is a grave digger, a formerly legendary secret society of monster hunters who make sure the dead they bury stay six feet under. But after the most recent encounter with the supernatural, Digger's mentor hangs up the shovel and moves to Las Vegas to gamble away his golden years. Now, Digger must train a new grave digger, Emily Spade, a college burnout and a mild alcoholic who is the only applicant willing to do the dirty job. Her life is falling apart and Digger's is already broken, but together they might be their small town's best hope of staying monster free. Again, I know that sounds, sounds childish, but I like the way that synopsis reads. I can't wait to check out Digger number one as well. And then for our Hellboy fans, once again this week from Dark Horse, we have Hellboy the Bones of Giants number one. When a startling discovery is made in Sweden, the BPRD sends Hellboy and Abe Sapien to investigate. What ensues is a wild adventure full of Norse legends, mythical creatures, and a threat that could bring not just Earth, but the nine realms of Norse mythology to their knees. So if you're a Hellboy fan, you've got another number one coming out this week. I think there's just one last week as well. And then Dynamite, we, the cover that I talked about in the cover uh, section of the video, Sheena, Queen of the Jungle, number one, that just gorgeous cover by Perillo. Sheena is recruited. No, wait, that's being kind. She is forced to go to enter the Biodome, an amazing synthesis in nature and machine where something has gone terribly wrong. Outside the dome, she's forced with human trickery and deceit. Inside the dome, she faces the deadly jungle and a fast murdering mystery. So I don't know that I'm gonna read the book, but I am definitely picking up that cover. Absolutely love that. So if you're a Dynamite fan and you like Sheena, you got a new book coming out this week. The story does sound kind of cool, so that may be you know, something fun to check out. Then from IDW, we've got a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles book out this week, and that's TMNT, Best of April O'Neill, number one. This is a 100-page, one-shot collection of stories featuring April O'Neill. A few interesting books from Image this week. Uh, the first one is A Thing Called Truth, number one, a chaotic LGBTQ plus road trip. A workaholic scientist who wants to save the world and a woman who fears nothing but discovering her own destiny find themselves mixed up in a chaotic on-the-road adventure through Europe. Will they manage to find a middle ground between their opposing ways of life, at least for long enough to complete their mission? And could this trip lead to an unexpected romance? So that sounds fun. Uh, a Thing Called Truth, number one. And then, probably one of the books I'm most looking forward to outside of Knighted for the week um, is also from Image, and that is called Newburn, number one. And this is a new Chip Zdarsky title. Um, 
I've been loving Zadarski's Daredevil run. I've been loving Stillwater. Pretty much anything Zadarski's writing right now, Justice League. I've, I've just been digging it. Easton Newburn is a private detective without loyalties, investigating conflicts between rival crime factions while collecting enemies along the way. In this debut issue, a man is murdered after stealing from his own mafia family, but they aren't the ones who ordered the hit. So that sounds cool. Like That sounds really interesting to me. This book also uh, features a backup story called Brooklyn Zirconia, and this is written by rising stars Nadia Shamas and Zayed Yusuf Ayub. No chance I said that right. If that artist or that guy is watching right now, uh, I'm sorry. And we continue on with the indies. I told you there were a bunch of them this week. From It's Alive, we've got Tangled River, number one. Michael Cohen, co-creator of Strange Attractors, launches his new series, a heartfelt coming-of-age tale set against a science fiction backdrop. Tanya is an artistic teen living on a distant Earth colony where all technology has mysteriously stopped working. One day, she sees a mysterious object in the sky and finds herself thrown into an adventure that, in, that transforms her entire life. Sometimes I wish for that, that all like technology would just stop working and we would go back to the old days. Not really, because it would be pretty boring and life would be a whole lot harder. My job would be a whole lot harder. But I think that's a pretty inter interesting concept for a story that's Tangled River number one from It's Alive. Then we jump over to one of my favorite publishers, and that is Scout Comics. And from them this week, we have Epic Tavern Tales from the Fantastical Crime Units number one. This is a Black Caravan imprint, and the first episode, or that's what they call it as episode, is called Angel in a Centaur Fold. Hard-boiled detective Victor Marshall finds himself partnered with idealistic young necromancer Amelia Mortalis and her crew of undead animal pals to investigate the disappearance of a young centaur in this official adaptation of the video game Epic Tavern. The series follows the adventures of an overworked agency in the fantasy realm of, of Beower, tasked with investigating crimes committed by supernatural and mythological creatures. Hidden within are clues for unlocking bonus content in Epic Tavern, including a final boss battle and the most powerful artifact in the game so that'd be cool people who you know who game who like that game this will be a cool book for them to pick up that's why i included it on the list i thought if you're into that and you're into this game this would be cool because you know it's kind of like the fortnite the batman fortnite where you get the skins i know nothing about any of that gaming stuff but i thought this might be cool so yeah from scout comics epic tavern tales from the fantastical crimes unit number one and wrapping up the indie list this week is from Vault Comics, and that book is called Rush Number One. This hungry earth reddens under snow clad hills. 1899, Yukon Territory. A frozen frontier, bloodied and bruised by the last great gold rush. But in the lawless waste to the north, something whispers in the hind brains of men, drawing them to a blighted valley where giant spider tracks mark the snow and impossible gun roars in the night. To Brokoof, where gold and blood are mined alike, now stumbling towards its haunted forest comes a woman gripped not by greed, but by the snarling rage of a mother in search of her child. So that sounds kind of fun. Um, I do kind of like the Gold Rush story. You know, you're going to have this crazy spider, you know, uh, or these giant spiders. So I, I think Rush number one sounds fun. I'm looking forward to kind of checking that one out as well. As I said, that was the last one. That was a bunch of books um, on the indie side this week. That's where the majority of the keys lie this week. But we do still have our first appearances to go through. So let's go do that right now. Only two first appearances to report on this week. Uh, the first one is Batman Reptilian number five. And again, and I feel like I, I've done this a couple of times, but it keeps, you know, from what I'm reading, it keeps saying this as a possible first appearance of the Reptilian's mother. And I've been reading the story, um, kind of keeping up with it. It's been a good story. I really enjoy uh, this Reptilian series. Like, it's been good. Um, and I think we're getting into this one, and this may be the one where we get to meet the Reptilian's mother. So be on the lookout for that one. And then finally, Death of Doctor Strange, Avengers number one, where you get the first appearance of a monster described as similar to the Juggernaut and mystical. So yeah, that could be fun. I'm a big Juggernaut fan, love Juggernaut. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna check this one out as well. 
All right, guys, that's it for the week. Uh, big list this week. Like I said, not a lot from the big two, not a lot of first appearances, and really not a lot of first cover, a lot of covers for me, but a ton of indie books, and I'm looking forward to checking out some number ones, new series. So it should be a fun week as always. Thank you guys so much for coming over and spending a little time with me. Uh, this video has become one of the most popular on my channel, and I really do appreciate all your guys' support and making it that way. I, I really enjoy doing it. Uh, it's something I kind of do anyway, and, and now I can share it with you guys, and hopefully it helps you out in some way when it comes to New Comic Book Day. All right, guys, that's it for me. I hope you have a great New Comic Book Day. I know I'm going to, as I always end these things. Until next time.